What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Wanted to do sort of an abbreviated video on VW generator replacement in the vehicle. The easy way. Uh, I've got a full um, explanation on another video if you need uh, kind of a step-by-step -step process. But today I'm just going to sort of fly through it and give you the sizes needed, uh, the order of the steps, and a couple tips and tricks along the way. So here we go. We're going to start by removing the front pulley on the generator as well as the belt. That's going to be a... Oh, I'm trying to remember. Inch and a... No, sorry. Seven-eighths. Seven-eighths socket. So I'm going to use my impact and buzz that off. Make sure to keep track of your shims as they come off. Take our belt off, more shims. and the back half of that pulley. Also keep an eye on your key. It'll probably fall out and it will probably end up down in there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect any and all electrical in the way. That would include your D plus and DF wires. Those are 5 sixteenths or eight millimeter. The spade on your choke the spade on your fuel solenoid, and that should be good. Next, we'll move around to the back side to hold on to our fan pulley. That's going to be a half inch ratchet with an inch and seven sixteenths socket. So you'll need this and a vice grips next. As I mentioned in the other video, if you're reusing the generator that you're taking out, you're going to want to double nut this instead of using a vice grip just because you don't want to risk scarring up this shaft at all. In my case, I'm replacing this generator. So I'm going to hold on. I've got it gripped as tight as possible with the key still in place. That'll give it a little bit more to grab onto. And I can reach around the back here. And with that inch and seven sixteenths, I can break that fan nut loose. Once you've broken that loose, you can pretty much spin off by hand. We've got that off. Next, we'll loosen our 13 millimeter on the generator strap. Loosen that and just slide it back. And then we're going to go ahead and remove our carburetor. The carburetor, as mentioned in the other video, you wanna use a 13 millimeter offset box end wrench. There's two 13 millimeter nuts on the carburetor and you also want to remove your throttle cable for me that's an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 and you can just loosen the set screw and pull your throttle cable out I've got the front nut off on the carburetor to get to the rear all you've got to do is pop your distributor cap off and set that kind of down into the side and that will give you access right through here to the rear nut on the carburetor. You can just lift the carburetor straight up and set it to the side here. Make sure to keep it straight up and down or you'll be spilling fuel. And finally, we've got to remove our four 10 millimeter bolts holding the plate to the fan shroud. In my case, the lower two were never installed, which makes things a little bit easier, but it's still not too big of a deal to get to those lower two uh, right down in there. But I'm just going to remove these upper two, and we'll be ready to slide the generator out. One thing that will help is if you just start it and slide it a little bit, and your fan is stuck on the shaft, you can just put a flat screwdriver down in here and push back a little bit to drop that fan off of the generator shaft. 
And now we're in good shape to lift this right out. I'll try and do it one handed so you can see. But it's kind of heavy and difficult. Just a process of wiggling back and forth, up and down. There we go. It's just too heavy. I can't do it with one hand. On the back of the generator, keep track of your shims once again and your, <coughs> I don't know what we'll call this, fan bushing, I guess. Keep track of that. You're then going to remove the two 10 millimeter nuts and keep track of the orientation of the opening in the plate. In my case, my opening is opposite the D, F, and D plus terminals. So we want to make sure to put it back on in the same way. Okay, going back on. I've got the plate secured to the generator with the two 10 millimeters and the lock washers. We want to make sure not to lose our uh, key in the rear. So we're going to go ahead and stick the fan bushing, or whatever we called it, on here hub I guess we'll say. So we're going to go ahead and slide this on to hold things in place and then put on the same number of shims that you had. Oh, I can hear that my key slipped out. So make sure that your key is in place and what we're going to do is actually pull the fan out and test fit it to get the right number of shims so that we're not rubbing on the plate. I'll show you that here. Okay, so with the generator out, you can simply pull your fan out of the car. And I want to show you this. For example, with no shims in place, if I put the fan on, you can hear that we're rubbing. So what I'm going to do is, I had two originally, so I already know that two is about right. But I'm just going to take two shims. You could take one if you wanted to try it first. Push down slightly. We're rubbing a little bit, but I'm also holding this by the plate. So I really need to hold the generator and do this test. There we go. I ended up going with four shims. And I might even add a fifth, but it seems to be pretty much okay. So now you've got to take your fan back off, but leave the shims and the hub in place and carefully without dropping those, put the fan back into the shroud, and then we're going to put the generator back into the fan. You cannot fit it in with the fan on the shaft, in my experience. Uh, so we're going to put the fan in first and then the generator. So again, our fan is in the car. Our required shims are on the generator. And carefully, we can lower this back into the fan. You're not going to get it perfectly lined up yet. You're just going to get it through the center hole, and then we'll index that later. Make sure that you're not pinching your spark plug wires. You can just kind of press those down out of the way and this will all sit flush. Make sure that your uh, D, F, and D plus are oriented off to the right. You can also have them here, but we need to make sure that that opening in the fan plate is in the right position. And based on what I took out, uh, this is where it needs to be, which I think means that it's pointing uh, down or to the left. So anyway, next we'll put our 10 millimeter bolts back into the fan plate. Before I go too much further, I'm going to reach around and get that fan lined up. So I'll kind of show you that however possible. So I'm reaching around back, I can feel the fan and I can feel that it's on the generator shaft. So now all I need to do is kind of turn it until it lines up with those two flat spots and it'll kind of press in and I'll feel that it's seated. So 
So we're not quite there yet. I'm just wiggling around up and down and turning. There. I can tell that it went on and it's also not grinding as I turn it anymore. So now I'll take my curved washer with the curve facing out and so like so this will push on to the back and then we'll put our nut on with the flat side out. Before you tighten that nut down fully make sure that you're turning the washer until it clicks into place and locks in and then you can kind of hand tighten it for now just to kind of hold things in place. Next I had a panic moment there. Next I'm going to put my generator strap on. If I've caught you in time, you're going to want to put this on before you're to this point. You're going to want to just slide it on to the generator before you set it in the car. But if you forget, not a big deal. All we have to do is undo the bolt and put it around the back of the generator. And you're going to want the bolt facing this direction so that you can come down with an extension here and uh, tighten that bolt. So I'm going to undo this, slip it onto the generator. Once you've got that slid on, that's again a 13 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and tighten it down right about in this position, sort of lined up with the oil fill is what I found to be best. Now we'll set our carburetor back in place. Just right up and on. Put those two 13 millimeter nuts back on and you can reconnect your solenoid spade and around the back side your choke spade. Once the carburetor's on and tight, slide your throttle cable back in. I like to leave just a little bit of free play in there and then we'll tighten that down with that 8 millimeter. We can put our distributor cap back on Get the clamp out of the way. And next move on to the pulley and the belt. So if you remember we had the rear portion of the pulley and make sure that you get your key in place and that it stays in place as you slide the pulley on. You can also kind of look down in the keyway and see if there's the key there once you're seated. That means you're in good shape. If that's either fallen out or kind of rocked up and you can't see the end of that key, you better pull this off and double check. Now, with our belt on, I'm going to just start with one shim and see how that feels once I get things together. So I'll have one shim in between the two pulleys. I'll slide my outer pulley on making sure that these two fingers line up with the two slots. We'll put the rest of the shims on the outside of the outer pulley, tighten it down, and see how our belt tension is. It does seem a little bit loose to me, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that one shim. Probably won't make much difference, but uh, I want this to be a little bit tighter than that. So I should mention the original nut that came off this car was a 19 millimeter. The nut that came with the new generator was that uh, 7 eighths. And I'm using standard, so that's 3 quarter versus 7 eighths. So anyway, I'm just going to pull this off, remove that shim. I went ahead and stuck my DF and D plus wires back on. And now I believe our final step is to reach around and tighten the... Uh, fan nut. So for that we're just going to do just as we started except instead of buzzing this down we want to do it by hand. So I'm going to put a 19 millimeter on the front here that goes directly through to the back and I can hold it with my inch and 7 16 and tighten things up. And there you go back together I would say 
including filming the video. That was about a 45 minute job. I did have all the tools out already, so uh, not too bad. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And as I mentioned, uh, I should have that other video up that's a little bit more detailed, but um, I might find that this is just as good. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe as always, and I'll see you on the next video.